Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question that was posed to us from a previous video I had created. And this user wanted to know if there is a way to control the file naming and the part numbering for <clears throat> some frame generator components. They had a very specific format they were trying to achieve. So I'm going to place a link to that other video in the description so you can check it out and you can see their original comment. And I'm going to endeavor to answer their question a couple different ways. We're going to first take a look at controlling the file name and the display name using just the out of the box inventor functionality. And then because of the way frame generator likes to operate, it, it tends to kind of assign the part number based off what's in the content center. And so we're going to show a way using iLogic to <clears throat> make that utilize the final file name, whatever you assign to it. So uh, first things first, in uh, got an assembly here. I've already knocked out the skeletal model. We're all set to go. And I'm going to take a look at the application options from the tools tab. And what they did a couple of years ago, I think in the 2019 release of Inventor, they gave us a way to edit the file naming defaults. And so the first one, awesomely enough, is the frame generator. So a couple of things, the user wanted to potentially add some on the fly stuff, but once you start assigning file names, on the fly doesn't really work as well. So what I was thinking was, <clears throat> I'm gonna actually use the file naming convention here. So what I typically do is I would say it's whatever the assembly name is, frame member, and then I add a number, just incrementing it each time. But they had a very specific thing they wanted, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete what I normally do, and then they only wanted a couple digits, so I'm gonna grab the index number and switch it to just two digits, and then the last colon is incrementing by one. Now, to, if you're unfamiliar with this area, you hit the little plus sign, these are all the properties that you can grab. So I just have assembly name, index number, and then like I said, I'm only doing two digits and then I'm incrementing by a digit every time. I like to overwrite current file, so if we decide to use a longer or a bigger tube shape or whatever, I don't wanna generate a bunch of new files, just keep it. And then we're gonna go up here and we can check this box. So this is gonna make it a little bit easy because I want everything to be the same, the file name, the display name, and eventually I'm gonna pull from the display name to set the part name. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, <clears throat> hit okay, and here we go. So this is just my sample test assembly. So what would happen is I would come over here, place part, I'm just going to use the out of the box tube. I click it, hit apply, and you can see what's going to happen, right? It would create this new file and then it's going to change my display name to my frame test assembly 01, right? And that's also going to be the file name. So you can see that those file naming defaults are coming into play and will work great. But I actually want to do something different because the user had a very specific type of a name. So I'm actually going to do a file, save as, and we'll save this as their type. So this is what they were going to name it. I'm just gonna use exactly their naming. They would have like a project number, in this case, triple fives. Then they would have like some sort of a custom number. It could be like, a, this is the frame batch number, et cetera. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And so now we're gonna have a new assembly, 555.123. So this is where we'll now use that to our advantage. I'm gonna go back in here, I'll apply that same frame here and here. And then if I hit the little okay, it's gonna again create that subframe, right? And they didn't have any requirements for the frame name, but what they're most interested in is each one of these members is now gonna get the project dot, that particular sub name, and then the 01, 02, et cetera, et cetera. So this is on a frame by frame basis. Now we're gonna get those members to show up. So cool, we hit okay. We accept all of those things. And then, <clears throat> oh, looks good. So we've got that. Look at the eye properties. <clears throat> Looking good file name wise, display name's the same. 
but boo, it grabs the <clears throat> particular part number right from the content center. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> we're going to take a look at iLogic to fix this. So if I go to iLogic, this is where I knocked out an external rule for frame generator part numbering. And if we take a look at that rule, what it's going to do is it's going to go through the assembly. It's going to look at each document in the assembly. And if that particular assembly is a frame generator component, and I want to throw a special shout out here to Johel Forshav. He had a video that <laughs> where I gleaned this code on how to identify this as a frame generator part because I don't want it to edit any other part. I only want to edit this particular frame generator component or each frame generator component. And, you know, it's checking some other stuff like is it a part file? Is it modifiable? And is it not referenced? Is it actually in here? Uh, again, from Joe Hill's video. And then the, the bit that I wanted to do is right here. So I need to get access to the property sets, the I properties. And specifically, I want to set the part number equal to whatever the display name is. Okay, so that's what the code is doing. Go ahead and close that. And just to test it, I've also added another part that is not a frame generator component. So if I take a look at this one just as a test, I come in here and I can call it, I don't know, whatever, YouTube rules. Cool, there's my part number. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to this external rule and I wanted to use the external rule because then I don't have to do anything to each part. We run the rule. And now if we look back here, first of all, this is not a <clears throat> frame generator part and you see it didn't do anything with the part number. But if we look at this one, can take a peek at that, look at the properties, and there you can see it now inherited the part number, which is the same as the display name, which is getting it from the file name. Boom, so a nice circle there. And just to test it out, if we go up here and we want to change one of these members, we want to make that maybe a little bit bigger tube or something like that. We go ahead and hit OK. You can see what happens is that resets itself. And so we would have to run that rule again. So basically, and we could play with this too, if you wanted to, you could set this up so that that rule runs every time you save it or just before you save it. Yeah, don't run it after you save it. <laughs> run it just before you save it. And then it will go ahead and grab those properties. So it's an interesting question, not something I do all the time, but uh, hopefully that gives you some idea of where we can use some of the standard functionality in Inventor and then utilizing some iLogic gives a little bit more oomph and we can get a result closer to what we're looking for. So hope you have found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.